There's nothing worse than an injured child. With how active kids are now, with sports, dance, and other physical activities, many kids experience a foot or ankle injury. My name is Dr. Andrew Schneider, and I'm a podiatrist in Houston, Texas. In my practice, I work with children of all ages. Kids aren't just little adults. They have foot problems that are unique to them. In today's video, I'll discuss the four most common foot and ankle injuries that we see in young athletes. But before I get into it, please like, share, and subscribe to this video. Also, I wrote a book all about children's foot health. You can get it for free at www.kidsfootbook.com. Kids are very active these days. Between soccer, gymnastics, football, baseball, dance, cheerleading, basketball, and everything else, there's a huge strain put on the foot and ankle. There's little wonder why many kids experience foot and ankle injuries. The most common injury I see is an ankle sprain. An ankle sprain occurs when the foot rolls in on the ankle. The problem I see with ankle sprains is that they're so common people think they're just not a big deal, but they are. When you roll your ankle, you injure the ligaments on either side. That's what a sprained ankle is, a tear of the ligaments. The good news is ligaments heal. The bad news is, if it's not treated properly, the ligaments heal in a loosened position. This leads to less stability of the ankle and increases the chance of future sprains and injuries. The best way to treat an ankle sprain, after an x-ray to make sure nothing is broken, is to immobilize it in a walking boot. This will provide stability to the ankle and allow the ligaments to heal in a more stable way. You can expect your child to be in a boot for about two weeks. Even after he comes out of the boot, I still recommend wearing a good ankle brace, especially when he's playing sports. That will help protect the ankle when it's being used the most. If your child has recurrent sprained ankles, that's another reason to get checked. We may need to control the motion of the foot and the ankle with a prescription orthotic to prevent persistent sprains. The second common injury seen in young athletes is shin splints. Shin splints are an inflammation of the muscles that attach to the front of the leg. Those muscles become the tendons that travel to the front of your child's ankle and to the top of the foot. Shin splints are common in athletes with flat feet and also those with high arched feet. Shin splints are an overuse injury. The muscles are contracting too much, which is what causes the inflammation. That's why we see it in foot types that are less stable. If you've had shin splints, then you know how painful it can be and it seems like it will never go away. Initially, you can treat your child's shin splints with oral anti-inflammatory medication and ice. That will help to control the inflammation. But the true culprit that makes shin splints so insidious is your child's foot mechanics. Even though the inflammation is being controlled, the muscles are still working too hard. The way to get the muscles to work less is with the use of a custom orthotic. By providing mechanical support to your child's foot, her base of support, it would allow her mechanics to work in a more efficient way. This will reduce the pull of the muscles to the point where your child no longer needs to take anti-inflammatory medication. The next sports injury I like to discuss is a tough one. It's a stress fracture. For child athletes, it's common to have a stress fracture in the metatarsal bones because of the excessive load during running and playing. In fact, this is one of the greatest dangers of playing on a harder surface. A stress fracture is a break in the bone that is not displaced. It's sometimes referred to as a hairline fracture, but don't let that make you take it any less seriously than any other type of broken bone. A stress fracture needs to be immobilized and your child needs to stop participating in sports and running, plain and simple. If he continues to play or doesn't properly treat a, stre a stress fracture, then it will become displaced and at best will require a longer recovery and at worst, will require surgery to properly repair the broken bone. 
Your child can expect to be immobilized for six to eight weeks with a stress fracture. That's just how long it takes for the bone to heal. Even so, he won't go back to running or participating in sports until at least 12 weeks after the injury. I need to know the bone is strong enough to support him when he's running and playing. It doesn't make sense to go back too soon, only to be injured again right away. The final sports injury is exclusive to young athletes. It's a condition that's responsible for pain occurring on the back of the heel. It's called Seaver's disease. It's not actually a disease. It's a condition where the pull of the Achilles tendon causes the growth plate on the back of the heel to become inflamed, and it hurts. Seaver's disease affects active kids ages 9 to 14. It's considered self-limiting. What that means is that if you do nothing to treat it, it will go away on its own, eventually. I don't know about you, but if my child is in pain, I'm not gonna wait until his growth plate closes for him to be pain-free. The good news is there are ways to treat Seaver's disease. A good start is applying ice and taking anti-inflammatory medication. If the pain continues, it's time to come to the office. I'll take an x-ray to confirm it's Seaver's disease. We can actually see some changes to the growth plate because of the tension on it. I'll likely use a medical grade insole to lessen the pull of the Achilles tendon on the growth plate. I also may recommend a stretching splint to be worn at night. This will help to stretch the Achilles tendon. I may also refer you to physical therapy to help reduce the inflammation. Depending on how your child responds to treatment, I may recommend a custom orthotic. That will make the feet work in a more stable way. It will also reduce the pull of the Achilles tendon on the heel. If your child is having foot or ankle pain, whether it's these conditions or others, don't wait. Come to get the pain checked so it doesn't become worse. There's nothing worse than having to sit out and watch your teammates play. Thanks for watching this video series about children's foot health. Please take a moment to like, comment, subscribe, and share on social media to help others find the information they need. And don't forget to pick up my free book about children's foot health at www.kidsfootbook.com. The link is at the top of the description below. If your child had to stop playing sports because of foot or ankle pain, contact us at the office for an immediate appointment. The link is also in the description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.